As some of you probably know, I have been in search for an awesome surface to use water-based markers on, and it hasn't really been that easy. Well, I think I may have found it. Stay tuned, and I will show you how I did this little drawing with water-based markers on panel. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Arts at Play, and today you are seeing me work with my Faber-Castell Pit Artist pens on encaustic board panel. As some of you may know, I have been looking for a very long time to find the perfect surface to work with water-based markers on, and I think maybe I have found it. I'm very excited about this. So first, I do want to say this video was not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. The encaustic board was sent to me by Ampersand as payment for them using my artwork in one of their videos, but they are not paying me to do this review at all, and neither is Faber-Castell. I'm not associated with either company as far as payment for this video goes. Anyways, so I do want to say I have a piece of paper kind of half covering this piece right now because I'm a lefty and the I don't want to mess up my sketch underneath because it is a peony and it's really intricate and this is my first time drawing one and so you're going to see me kind of working around the edges here when I do the background and I kind of have that flower covered up for now. I mean, the sketch is kind of hard to see anyways, but this kind of helped me to not get overwhelmed. So that's kind of a tip for you. This is not a tutorial, but just a tip, like when you have something that has a lot of intricate detail that you're not used to drawing, kind of break it down piece by piece and look at those abstract shapes. And that's what I'm doing here. I had that to protect the panel from my hand and to protect my drawing from my hand and from smearing because I wasn't sure if these would smear which they didn't really, so that's good. But I also, it was kind of a way to kind of keep myself concentrating on what I needed to do and not feel overwhelmed by what was to come in the drawing. So I'm sorry if that's kind of annoying for you, but I had to do what I needed to do for this piece to, you know, be its best. So anyway, um, <laughs> enough of that rant. Let's get right down to it. I am using, like I said, the Pit Artist pens by Faber-Castell. These are an India ink based pen. As some of you who have watched my videos in the past know, I prefer water based markers because of their light fastness. Um, obviously, alcohol based markers have a better reputation for blending, but as far as archivalness goes, I, I just can't bring myself to use them in my finished artwork that I plan to sell because even on the websites of these bigger companies, they even admit that they're not light fast. They're dye based and they're not light fast. So I am using the pit pens because they are archival and light fast. And I know that if I sell this piece, it's not just going to fade out on somebody's wall. That being said, we know that water-based markers are not typically as easy to blend as alcohol-based markers. And so I have been trying to seek out a way, because I love the vibrancy of markers, I've been trying to seek out a way that I could find a good surface that would be great for blending these markers. And so as some of you have seen before, I have used these markers on sanded paper. It was the Fisher 400, I believe, sanded paper. And that worked really well as far as blending goes because the ink kind of sat in the little crevices of the sand. And so it made it easier for me to blend. It didn't dry as fast. And that worked really, really well. I was very surprised. But of course, that's going to wear on my pens after a while. Thankfully, these are brush pens and these nibs are reversible. So I can, if one of my brush, one of my brush nibs kind of gets worn down on these, I just have to pull it out with some tweezers and switch it around and put it back in. And the other side has another brush and that's super exciting. But thankfully they don't wear it down too bad. I, obviously like you don't want to be ruining your markers, but these didn't wear down too bad. The ones that kind of wore down in my previous project kind of wore it down more to a bullet nib and I'm it's still very much usable. However, obviously, like I don't want to eat through my nibs. So it wasn't ideal. Plus Fisher 400 was like the only paper that I, the sanded paper that I found that it worked best on. I tried it on Lux Archival and I wasn't as pleased about it, even though Lux Archival sanded paper is phenomenal for like everything else. Um, so, and Fisher 400 is tinted and it's not 
apparently we found out the backside of it isn't acid free. So that's no fun. And I can't get the same vibrancy on a tinted paper as I can with a white surface. So then I tried these pens on Arches hot press watercolor paper and I really loved the results. It was beautiful. However, as we know, water-based markers have a tendency to eat through paper. It didn't happen as bad with Arches because this is a really, I mean, Arches is a really great paper, but it did kind of felt the surface a little bit. And when I say that, I mean, it kind of felt like felt after. It was kind of fuzzy after. And so I thought, this is great. It's beautiful artwork. Like I was really happy with the way it came out, but I'd like to find a good happy medium between my sanded paper experience and my watercolor paper experience for these. And so the search continued. Well, as some of you who have also been watching my videos for a while know, I have been trying these encaustic boards lately for a bunch of different mediums, or that's the plan. Uh, previously, I tried them with casein in my video where I tried casein for the first time, loved it for casein, and that's when I was like, okay, I have to try this for acrylics, I have to try this panel for oils, you know, the list goes on and acrylics and oils were really at the top of my list for me to try this panel for because I want to switch to panels um, for the most part in the future for my paintings because stretch canvas is really hard to store without damaging it. And I really like the smooth look of panels anyways, because I do a lot of realism and smoothness really helps with detail, obviously. And so that was my line of thinking with buying these panels. Um, I'm trying to find a panel that is absorbent enough that it's not going to be streaky, but smooth enough where I can get detail. And that in and of itself with paint has been an experience for me. Um, so when I tried this with casein, I was like, wow, this is going to work really well with my acrylics. And in my previous video where I was talking about the versatility of acrylics, you saw me try this panel with acrylics for the first time and I fell in love. Well, needless to say, I had been wanting to try this panel with other mediums and I had something like sparked an interest in me trying it for for markers. Um, so I had kind of tested a little corner back when I was doing my acrylic piece. I had tested like a little corner of this panel with some marker and I'm like, oh, I think that's going to work. Actually, initially I had <laughs> tested some markers on some pastel board also made by Ampersand and that's where I got the idea. I'm like, wow, this might actually work because I was going to do a colored pencil piece on pastel board and I wanted to see if I could do some markers underneath. It's a project that didn't end up working out and I ended up doing my acrylic project. So I digress. Anyway, that's what sparked me to think, wow, I got to try this on, if it works on pastel board, which is a little bit rougher and more almost powdery feeling because it's made for pastels. Um, I'm like, I bet this would work really well on encaustic board because the encaustic board is just a little bit smoother, but it has the absorbency I'm looking for. Because I have tried Blick panels and they're not absorbent enough. They were too streaky for for my um, acrylics and then, so they were way too streaky for markers. I tried Yupo paper before, but the Yupo paper, I found it to be streakier. I couldn't get the smooth gradients that I wanted between the marker strokes and it wasn't permanent. And like it would wipe right off if I if I even stuck my finger on it, you'd see my fingerprint and it would be days later. And I wanted something that was permanent. This is absorbent enough that it won't get streaky and it's permanent. And but it's also stiff enough and smooth enough that I can lift if I need to. So I'm using a lot of watercolor effects here. I am able to lift with wet brushes if I need to. I am able to lift with wet Q-tips. I'm even able to erase ink on this board. I'm very excited. And just a side note, another good marker that is great to use are the Winsor & Newton pigment markers. I didn't use them on this because I'm a fan of the brush nib and those don't have brush nibs, but those are just as archival and they blend beautifully as well. And they can be worked with hand in hand with these markers as well. But I'm loving the fact that I can use all these different techniques. And I pulled out like all the stops for this. I use watercolor techniques. Like as you can see, there's like a little lid off to the side that I'm using as a makeshift um, palette. And it is, um, it's just like a margarine lid. And I scribbled my 
markers right on that palette and lifted it with a water brush. I also just lifted it with a regular wet brush. I lifted it with Q-tips and put it onto my surface that way. Um, there were times when I would put the marker directly on my surface and then go back on top with a water brush and blend it out that way. There were so many ways to blend it. And of course they blended marker on marker as well, just using the markers themselves. I was able to blend on the surface, which is what I was looking for. So I am very excited about this. This is a game changer for me. I have a feeling that I am going to be buying a lot of these panels for many different uh, uses, including marker. I think this might be my main way to work with marker now because I love the vibrancy of marker. I love the fact that it is so immediate and it's a lot quicker than colored pencil and you got that just bold, crisp colors. Like it's perfect for things like florals because they're just, it's so bright and bold. And I love water-based markers because they're light fast. And so if I want to, I'm actually going to, with this one, I'm going to put a spray varnish over it so that it's nice and shiny. It'll be perfectly permanent. And then I can sell it. So here is the final piece. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Um, I just can't, I can't recommend this method enough. I am so excited and you will be seeing more from me on this. Here is this week's artwork of the week. If you are interested in purchasing this, please check out the link to my website in the description below. Also, I wanted to announce I am now offering some virtual private lessons through Zoom. If you are interested in signing up for that, you must be 18 or older to sign up. Please check out the link in the description or feel free to contact me through my website. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media, so check out the links in the description below.